Shalom, I'm sister Shalom. Kohalo Yahweh Bashim Hamashiach Bamalak Yahushai. All honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Lord willing, y'all are having a beautiful Sabbath prep day and y'all are holding it down through the spirit. I wanted to do this video because we were um, talking about etiquette on a third sister's call. That well, it's not. It's a 60 second call, but this is our third part three of the etiquette um, chat for the sisters call. And initially, we went into the etiquette of camp being at camp and how to behave and conduct yourself at camp but we more so towards the end of the call the middle and the end of the call we started talking about dying for the lord and i was saying that's true etiquette and i want to get the definition of etiquette okay it says etiquette the customary code of polite behavior in society or among members of a particular profession or group so our etiquette as Israelite women, you know, it isn't just, oh, the fork goes on this side and the spoon goes on this side. And when you go over someone's house, you speak and bring a dish and, you know, you wear this modest and you sit up straight. You know, it's two sides. It's also that that side where it's going to get gruesome, where it's going to get, you know, you're going to get down to the nitty gritty. It's going to get dirty when it comes to serving the Lord. The another side of that etiquette and another side of that, quote unquote, femininity, which would be die for the Lord and let's get the definition of femininity qualities or attributes regarded as characteristic of women so you know femininity at the end of the day all that is is the, the characteristics of the Bible characteristics of um, how Israelite women should conduct themselves in the Bible Proverbs 31 Titus 2 that's really all that it is at the end of the day the, the characteristics um, that the Lord has written for us we take that and display that and that's what um, so-called femininity is at the end of the day but you know I always see people talking about being feminine and oh etiquette uh, femininity and etiquette but it's always like a soft side to it it's always well you know this is how we do this and we no, but we gotta remember that it's two parts it's two parts of being of um, etiquette and it's two parts of femininity and that's it's that's going out dying for the Lord at the end of the day it's you um, protecting yourself you may have to put your um, life on the line for your family your children brothers sisters just like um, Esther just like Judith you're gonna see some bloodshed it's gonna be a lot going on in these last days you know being um, feminine and having etiquette is way more it's way more to it than you know what we really think and that's what I wanted to get into it um, today in the scriptures okay when you look up the attributes of or so like when you look up the definitions or the characteristics of uh, femininity um, it says sensitivity sweetness supportiveness gentleness warmth um, being cooperative, cooperative uh, expressiveness, modesty, humility, empathy, affection, tenderness, um, and being emotional, kind, helpful, devoted. And all of these are things that we should kind of already have an understanding on based off of the word of the Lord. Right? But one thing that stood out to me was being devoted and understanding. And we devote our lives to the Lord. So that's, if you hear the baby crying, sorry y'all, he's, he's teething, he's kind of going through it. But we devote our lives to the Lord. I want to read 2 Maccabees 7 and 2. But one of them that spoke first thus, first said thus, What wouldest thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. And 1 Maccabees 3 and 21, but we fight for our lives and our laws. So you're going to have to be ready to fight for your lives and your law for our lives and for the laws of our forefathers and foremothers at the end of the day. So you're going to have to you're going to be you're going to be put in some situations, you know, Lord willing, it's not the case. But you never know what the Lord may have for us. But you have to prepare your mind or not think like the scripture says, don't think of tomorrow, but using wisdom and discernment, asking the most high to gird up your loins. For the things that's to come. Because we're going to see things on this earth that we have never seen before. The greater evils shall happen that never happened before. So we're going to be seeing dead bodies dropping left and right. You're going to see, you know, hands being cut off. Um, heads being cut off. You're going to see these things. And this is... Um, Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witnesses... 
for the witness of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and for the word of God. So there, you're going to literally see people getting beheaded. And you have to have that manly stomach like the women in Maccabees. Okay. And let's get that. Second Maccabees. I'm going to pull it up. All right, it's 2 Maccabees. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I just want to read the account about the mother. Um, 2 Maccabees 7 and 20. But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bared with good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Yes, she ex uh, verse twenty one. Yes, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits, and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. So she had to stir up her woman, her her the thoughts that she was having as a woman, and she kind of had to gird up her loins with a manly stomach. You know, it's some things that women might not be able to take that a man can take. A man can see, you know, bloodshed, and they might be able to see blood, and a lot of women might throw up at the thought of seeing that or seeing that but she had to pretty much have that manly stomach and you need to have that same thing in these last days and prepare yourself for the things that's to come she really you know that mother in Maccabee she really showed so much strength through the script uh, through the spirit and I wanted to read uh, Proverbs 31 and 17 she girded her loins with strength and her and strengthened her arms so she girded her loins literally with strength and she strengthened her arms so that she was able to see her seven children get put to death so that she was able to prepare her mind to be put to death her mind and body right, and this is psalms 28 and 7 the lord is my strength and my shield my heart trusted in him and i am helped therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song will i praise him the Lord is our strength at the end of the day. And the Lord was also Judith's strength when we read that account. All right. And we can kind of go to Judith. I want to go to Judith chapter 12 and then 13. I want to start at 12 and Judith 12 and 16. Now, when Judith came in and sat down, Holofernes, his heart was ravished with her. And his mind was moved, and he desired greatly her company, for he waited a time to deceive her from that day that he had seen her. And that kind of shows you, like, look at the times we're living in. I just saw on the news, um, I forgot if it was in Kansas City, Oklahoma, an uh, Edomite was going out kidnapping Eve when they was coming from the club, killing them and raping them. So you have to, when, that's why it's also important to, you know, be aware of your surroundings and be modest as well. Because these women leaving a club, you know, you leave a club, they're probably drunk, high, whatever. And, you know, they about to go home. And you always going to have people, your adversary looking. You're going to have your adversary looking at you, trying to deceive you and trying to do something to you. So you have to be circumspect, whether you leave in a grocery store, whether you leave in the, um, the, the mall, Wherever it is that you're doing, you're getting off of work, you're putting your kids in the car, you have to be circumspect of these things because our enemies are literally going to try to deceive you and wait for something, um, for you to have your guard down so that they can hurt you and harm you or your children. Okay? Oh, man. So, like, I don't know my phone got charging. Okay, so I can. Okay, so I'm moving on to verse there. I mean to uh, Judith chapter thirteen. All right now, Judith had commanded her maid to stand with without her bedchamber and to wait for her coming forth as she did daily, for she said she she would go forth to her prayers and she spake to Bagos according to the same purpose. So all went forth, and none was left in the bedchamber, neither little nor great. Then Judah, standing by his bed, said in her heart, O Lord God of all power, look at this present upon the works of my hands for the exaltation of Jerusalem. 
For now is the time to help thine inheritance, and to execute my enterprises, to the destruction of the enemies which are risen against us. When she came to the pillar of the bed, which was at Holofernes' head, and took down his fashan from thence, and approached to his bed, and took hold of the head of his hair, and said, Strengthen me, O Lord God of Israel, this day. And she smote twice upon his neck with all her might, and she took away his hair from him, and, and tumbled his body down from the bed, and pulled down the canopy from the pillars. And Annan, after she went forth, and gave Holofernes his head to her maid. So, in order for Judith to literally cut this man, to pick up this big knife and to cut this man's head off, she needed the Lord. She needed strength of the Lord. And that's a very gruesome act. That's, that's you know, you got blood. That's horrific to see. You know, she, she had to literally see this man's head come off his body and his um, body tumble to the floor. She got blood on her dress and, you know, she... She, she literally got blood on her dress. There's blood everywhere. She put the blood in her bag. You know, sisters, we haven't seen things like that. We haven't seen, you know, someone have their head chopped off, nor have we ever had to do that to anyone. But you never know what you might have to do in these last days to protect yourself and to protect your family. Sisters, you know, you, you talk to your husband if you're married. Do y'all have some type of something to protect yourself in these last days? If Esau come up in your house, they're going to be coming up here trying to spoil us. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm not going out without a fight. You're not just going to come and take me. Well, I'm going out and I'm going to go out with a bang. Understand that. So it's not going to be, it's going to be a lot of bloodshed. It's going to be a lot of, um, you know, murdering left and right in these last days. Murders left and right. Killings, so like you're left and right. And you have to be able to ask yourself, dang, you know, let me, let me, you have to ask yourself, am I ready to see these things? Let me ask the most high to strengthen my spirit so that I can have that spirit that the mother of Maccabees had, the spirit that Judith had, and also the spirit of Jael as well. And I just wanted to get that. Lucky. And Jael, she went hard too, just like Judith. All right, this is Judges. Judges 4 and 21. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it I'm sorry I'm having some technical difficulties it's just Satan right now because it, it's acting up I mean I can't finish my phone is acting up Select your sisters. Bear with me, please. Okay, finally got it. All right, this is um, Judges 4 and 21. But Joel, I'm Selakia, but Jael, the wife of Heber, took a tent peg and took. What is this? English Standard Version? What is going on? We only do KJV over here. All right, but Jael, the wife of Heber, took a tent Y'all, this is so, this is just Satan. Alright, then, Je then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly into him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it in, and fastened it into the ground for he was fast asleep and weary so he died. So Jael, she had to do what she had to do to protect herself and to protect Israel, her household. Okay? To protect her husband. She had to do what she had to do. So, sisters, you might have to be in a situation where you're going to have to do what you have to do. Okay? And that's very, um, 
you you need a lot of strength from the Lord to do that to take a hammer and to literally nail someone's head down with a hammer that's that's crazy and also with Judith I like how she showed us how you have to you know be, use discernment and wisdom and that's what we need too in these last days when when she was speaking to Holofernes she could have been like, mm, nah, what do you, you want me to do what? But she talked to him in sweet words saying, you know, whatever, um, let's get it. She said, how shall I, how shall I not gainsay my Lord? Pretty much. And it's situations where in the last days, Eve is getting kidnapped left and right. Something might happen to you. You kind of have to um, agree with your adversary quickly. Like the scripture said. And that's exactly what she did. She agreed with her adversary quickly. So that she was able to help deliver Israel from dying. Okay. Alright, moving on. This is Psalms 144.1. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. So, you know, Barakatai Yahweh al Shai, you know, he's our strength and he teaches us how to war. Our hands to war and our fingers to fight. Because we're literally we're literally going to be fighting for our lives, like it says in 1 Maccabees 3 and 21. We're going to be fighting for our lives and our laws. And if we got to go out for the Lord, we're just going to have to go out for the Lord. All right, and I wanted to bring out Esther as well. This is Esther. This is editions of Esther's 14, 1 and 2. Queen Esther also being in fear of death, resorted unto the Lord and laid away her glorious apparel and put on garments of anguish and mourning. And instead of precious ointment, she covered her head with ashes and dung, and she humbled her body greatly, and all the places of her joy she filled with her torn hair. As she prayed unto the Lord God of Israel, saying, O my Lord, thou only art our king, help me, desolate woman, help me, desolate woman, which have no helper but thee, for my danger is in my hand. And that's really that's really getting down and dirty. You pulling out your hair. Sisters, when you get when we're gonna be in situations where just like Esther, life or death situations, where you literally gonna look upon and think about your foremothers and your forefathers, and you're gonna think about Esther, and you're gonna think about how Esther literally pulled out her hair. She pulled out her hair and she put dung on her face, all humbling herself greatly so the Lord could help deliver her. And if that's not getting down and dirty for the Lord that I don't know what else is if not chopping off somebody's head is not getting down and dirty for the Lord that I don't know what else is this is the gruesome part uh, and the the real you know raw side of being a Hebrew Israelite woman this is what this is a definitely a part of our femininity and a part of our um etiquette it's how we should behave we should do these things we should we devote our lives to the Lord and when we need the Lord we're gonna have to do things that we've never had to do before you might have to kill somebody to protect yourself and your family Lord forbid but you're gonna have to do these things you're gonna have to fast like this you could be you know in prison like the scripture says you know some of us are gonna be in prison they're gonna throw us in prison when you're in prison, make sure you're in there pulling out your hair. That you're putting dung on your face. That you're really fasting and praying to the Lord, knowing that He's our only help and that He's going to deliver us in these last days. Okay? Alright, and I want to see... Oh, this is Acts 21 and 13. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready to not be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord, Hamashiach Yahawashai. So all praises to the Most High. We should have that same spirit. We should all be ready to die for the Lord. 
not to be bound only, but to also die for the Lord. You know, if somebody comes into your house and they like, look, it's, it's you know, it's either you going to serve um, whoever is the president at the time or whatever type of system they're going to have, Joe Biden, whatever. You're going to have to serve him or you're going to have to serve Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Pick one. Yeah, we're going to go out and die for the Lord. That's who we're picking. That's that, without a doubt, Lord willing. I don't want to run to that. Understand that. Understand that, sisters. Make sure that, you know, you meditating on, you know, acts and um, meditating on strength. Acts and the most how to bless you with more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in these last days. But more so, more strength because it's going to be gruesome out here. You're going to, you know, you're going to see a lot of things. You're going to see heads chopped on the ground. You're going to see limbs, dead bodies, smells that you can't even take the smell. It's going to be, it's going to be real, you know, it's going to be real gruesome for us. So, you know, understand that that's a part of being an Israelite woman as well. It's just not about, um, you know, making dinner, putting dinner on the table and uh, sitting down, reading a book to your kids. It's about going out for the Lord and fighting for our lives and the laws. Understand that. And I hope this video was helpful to sisters. I really want y'all to, you know, continue to strive for perfection. And I wanted to just come on here and exhort y'all that, you know, it's more to it than being, uh, it's more to it than, you know, that, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. It's more to it than just, you know, softness of being an Israelite woman and being submissive and you know, to your husband and etc. You know, our main goal at the end of the day is to die for the Lord. That's why we're here. Is to to fight. You know, for the Lord. Um, I know. I want to get this preset. Um, this is Revelations 14 and 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. So I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to rest from my labors. I'm ready to rest from all the labors that we have to do. I'm ready to serve the Lord 24-7. Um, you know, I'm I'm tired of battling spirits. I'm tired of, you know, spiritual warfare. I'm tired of all of that. I'm ready to just serve the Lord 24-7 without having to repent. Um, and I know y'all feel the same way. You know, but through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven. And when you think about tribulation, think about bloodshed. You think about tears. You think about, you know, a lot of things that the Lord may bring upon you. And these are things that we have to go through because we deserve it. So sisters, make sure you learn how to protect yourself in these last days. Protecting your family in these last days. Because it's going to get real. We're at war. And I hope this video was helpful. Lord willing, y'all continue to endure through the spirit and power of your Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. I didn't want to make this too long. But I just wanted to exhort y'all that. And exhort you to, you know, continue in the faith and that. You know, it's going it's going to be bloody out here. Understand that. All right. And Lord willing, y'all have a good Sabbath prep day. Shalom.